Hi, my name is Stephanie Giard and I'm the Marketing Director at Geospatial Experts. Thanks so much for joining us today for this webinar using High Accuracy GPS with GeoJot Plus. The presentation and the demo will take about 20 minutes and then we'll have a Q&A session. Please feel free to type in questions at any time during the webinar into the Q&A section of GoToWebinar. And Tyler McGarity, our Technical Account Manager, will be showing the demo after, after I finish my uh, introduction here. So GeoJot Plus is a full solution that takes you all the way from mobile field data collection to reports, maps, and integration into your existing systems. The GeoJot Plus app turns your employees' smartphones and tablets into photo-based, geo-enabled data collection tools. You can then automatically have all of your data transferred back to the office via the cloud, and then using the GeoJot Plus core desktop application, create all the output that you need, including any reports, maps, everything. So, here we go. Since 2001, we at Geospatial Experts have been the leader in photo-based GIS data collection. This started with our first product, which is a GPS PhotoLink, and now with uh, GeoJot Plus. On the screen here are a few examples of the thousands of customers that we have worldwide. We also have resellers that span the globe. Most of the time, the three to five meter accuracy of a smartphone or tablet is enough for a lot of data collection needs. But what about those times when you need a more precise location? Well, with GeoJot Plus, you can continue to have the simple user-friendly interface of our app um, when, and you can couple it with high accuracy GPS to get those precise locations. So here's what Tyler is going to cover in his demo. I'm not going to get into this in any detail because that's what he's doing, but you can replace the GPS location on your smartphone. You can actually have it replaced on, in the app when you're collecting the data, or there are two different ways that you can collect it kind of post-processing when you're, you're um, handling your data once you've come back from being in the field. So here is Tyler's contact information and what's going to happen now. So Tyler is going to give his demo and at the end of the demo we are going to have a Q&A session. So as I said earlier, please feel free to ask any questions throughout the presentation. Um, after that, after this is all done, we are going to send the recording to everyone. And if you aren't already using GeoJot Plus, please take a look at our website or the website of one of our resellers and sign up for a 15-day trial. And then if you are interested in an enterprise license for 100 or more users, please contact Tyler directly. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Tyler. All right. Thank you, Stephanie. My name is Tyler McGarity. I'm the Technical Account Manager for Geospatial Experts. And I'm going to give a demonstration of using a higher accuracy input in order to uh, get higher accuracy points in GeoJot Plus. Now, like Stephanie mentioned, there is a few different ways we can do this. One way is to hook an external GPS receiver directly up to your device via Bluetooth and replace the device's location services with that high accuracy signal. Uh, by doing that, it allows you to instantly see uh, what the reported accuracy is in the GeoJot mobile app, take the picture, and uh, have that accuracy written right into the picture. The other ways to do it are uh, to collect a simultaneous point. So you could be out there in the field taking pictures and adding data uh, to the GeoJot app, and at the same time with a high accuracy uh, GPS unit with an antenna uh, or a backpack unit, you can be capturing points and then you can marry those points to the GeoJot Plus information you collected inside of Core. The third way to do that is to have already existing high accuracy points. Maybe you have assets that have already been uh, survey grade uh, points associated with them and you want to be able to just add a new photo or new information to those already very accurate points. Uh, you can do that in core as well. Uh, you can go into your GIS system, you can extract uh, that layer of points and then marry it to the new information that you collected in GeoJot Plus. So we'll go over uh, how to do those different kinds of uh, steps. First thing we're going to do is take a look at a mobile device. You can see my mobile device up here. Um, if you want to hook up a Bluetooth 
external unit to the mobile device. Uh, pretty simple to do. There's a couple things you need to consider. Uh, one, you have to have Bluetooth on, so you're going to want to uh, make sure that your Bluetooth is turned on and make sure that if you go into Bluetooth that you pair with the device that you're using. Uh, in this case, um, I have a Trimble R1 unit, so it's paired with that unit. Uh, once it's paired with that unit, you also want to make sure that your phone is able to give you mock locations. Mock locations are what allows the external signal from a device, the external location information, to be fed into the location services for the device itself and replace those. So with mock locations turned on and an external device connected, all of the locations reported inside of your device from any kind of location-based app uh, whether it be maps or navigation uh, or GeoJot Plus, they're going to be replaced by that external signal and that's what it's going to use. Uh, so to do that, one thing, you can, uh, one thing you'll need to do is make sure that you have mock locations enabled. Now you can do that in developer options. Uh, you can go into your settings and go to developer options. If you don't have developer options turned on, uh, what you need to do is go into your about on your phone and then on your build number, if you just start clicking on that, it will start counting down until your developer mode has been turned on. I already have it on, so uh, it just tells me you already have developer mode turned on. Uh, then you'll go into your developer options once you have developer turned on and make sure that the allow mock locations box is checked there. Um, it looks a little different in Android 6. It, it just says, what is your mock location provider? So it asks you, you know, to pick an app that you already have installed. Uh, this is in uh, Android 5, so it just says allow mock locations. So then I have a device connected externally. I have mock locations enabled. And then to be able to use that device, I need to use one more thing, which is some kind of application that takes that information from the external source and pushes it into the actual uh, location services on the device. So if you're using like a Bad Elf or an EOS unit, uh, you can use the Bluetooth GPS. That's a free app that's out there. Uh, it works really well. Uh, it works with all kinds of uh, all kinds of external units. Um, that is uh, one methodology. There's also some companies like Juniper or Trimble make their own apps to do it. Uh, because I'm using a Trimble R1 here, I'm actually going to use the Trimble. Uh, GNSS status app and uh, to do that it pops me in here to this app uh, it tells me uh, what my accuracy is when you first come in you'll want to click on the receiver type and make sure that that's connected once you've connected to that receiver type uh, you can pop in and you can see here that right now inside of the office uh, I'm getting about 1.1 meters which is is pretty good we are indoors so uh, outside, uh, this unit did pretty well. I, I did some testing on it, and I could get about uh, 18 inches outside, so well, well sub meter when we were out there doing that. So then that allows you to, you can see that that reported distance there. And if I go into my GeoJot app, you're going to see that also GeoJot Plus is reporting down here that. Uh, my accuracy is right about that same level, uh, 4.6 feet. Uh, so then normally outside with one of these units, uh, the Galaxy S4 is what this is, but pretty much any of the Android higher end units, uh, you can expect to get without any kind of additional external source. Uh, I can usually get three to five meters. Um, so this is already doing much better than that with this connected. Now I can go out, I can snap my photos. Any of the photos I take are fed into GeoJot with that higher accuracy coordinates. And then when I go through and, uh, and move those, uh, or when I go through and process those pictures, I already have the coordinates uh, included. One thing you can do as well when you're in the GeoJot app and uh, you're using one of these units, you can go in to your GPS settings and uh, you can make sure that your required accuracy is set to very high. Now, the reason to do that is um, if you turn on GeoJot and snap a photo quickly without really checking your accuracy, uh, it may not have settled down on the most accurate location. 
and if you don't have a required accuracy set it's going to let you take that picture and it may be way off and I'll show you uh, kind of an example of how those go in a second here. So now that I've got that set up on my device I can take my pictures and uh, I can move on and, and do anything I need to do out in the field. What that information becomes is uh, if I go back in here to core um, I can take a look and say okay so I went through and I took these photos with my uh, my Galaxy S4 here they are uh, all around us locally I can go in and look at my data editor and uh, on my map screen I can see where it located these photos and it's not too bad but the photo locations aren't great these are the ones that I took with just using the GeoJot app without waiting for it to settle uh, so they're not nearly as accurate as they would be if I let it settle and then not nearly as accurate as it'll be if we're hooked up to an external unit. Uh, I'll give you a brief example there. Um, if I bring up ArcMap here, I have it laid out. There's uh, several different points in here. So the red points you see here are the, for, for the sake of this, are control points. They're the, the high accuracy points taken with the Trimble unit sitting directly on top of the assets. So when I went out and if I just snapped GeoJot photos without an external unit hooked up, just snapped it with the phone, uh, you can see here my locations are not super close. Uh, I didn't have a required accuracy set, so it let me snap the photos wherever I was. A couple of them are pretty close, uh, but nowhere near as good as it could be. Now, if I go out there and took those photos with uh, high accuracy, turned on inside of GeoJot Plus app. Uh, you can see there it gets a lot closer. It didn't let me take the photos unless I was achieving that under 16 feet range, uh, so that looks a lot better. Now, once I've run the photos through and corrected them uh, with the high accuracy points I collected, maybe with an external unit, uh, then I'm in a position where I can move my points directly on to all of those locations. So if I have these points that aren't on my right location and I need them to be on that right location, I'm going to go through and I'm going to geotag them again. I'm going to use the information that was produced either out of the uh, simultaneous points I collected and we talked about earlier. Uh, somebody is out there with the pole and the high accuracy GPS device collecting points at the same time or from information from those survey grade points that I already have in my GIS system. Uh, may, I'm, I extract those as a CSV or a shape file, uh, and then I can use them to retag these points. So uh, a couple ways you can retag the points. First, when you go through the wizard, you have to pick your file. Uh, in this case, I have my, my high accuracy points here that were collected as a CSV or a shape file. Uh, I select those. I go to my next location. Oh, sorry about that. I, I can go to my uh, my next location, and uh, you can see here it asks you, okay, well, how do you want to tag this information? So I have all of this information in here. I can tag it by date or time, or I can tag it by file name. Well, that all works well if I'm uh, if I'm out there and I have uh, if I've taken these at the the same time, it's pretty easy. I can say, oh, okay, I'm going to do it via date and time. I can tell it that uh, either my, my camera equals GPS date and time or better yet, set a threshold match within like two minutes. Uh, what that allows you to do is if your point was collected with the high accuracy device within two minutes of the, the picture that you took, it's going to move the GeoJot photo to that point. And you can set this uh, this kind of threshold here, and you can tell it uh, whether you're going to match to the nearest point or uh, the, the nearest point before or after the photo. Uh, so there's a couple ways that you can do that there. You can also take your first photo of the day of the actual GPS receiver date and time, and then you can say, uh, I'm going to use a photo of the GPS receiver, and you can make the time sync that way and then it will move all the photos over to the locations from the the high accuracy GPS unit. Um, if it's already coming out of your existing database though obviously your date and time and uh, the file names are probably not going to match. Uh, so we've also added the ability to tag via a field. 
Uh, in this case, I'm going to tag via a field which is uh, the asset ID field. I have uh, I have this asset ID field. I'm going to tell it in these locations that asset ID is a, a field that I want it to tag from. Uh, I'm going to turn off the elevation because I want to use my existing elevation data. All of this displayed down here is from the actual uh, CSV file that I'm going to be using. Uh, so you could also tag via unique identifier if they were the same. Uh, in this case, you know, I, I knew which assets I was going to. That was part of the list when I went out. So the new information I collected from those assets uh, I can use as my tagging source. So I'm going to go ahead and say next. It's going to tell me uh, I don't want to geotag photos that already have GPS information. I'll click geotag. It's going to go through and move those photos to the higher accuracy locations. And now once it's done there, it tells me that it's linked them to positions. I can see up here uh, it's still at 100%. All of them have been tagged. If I go back over to the data editor tab, now I still have... Uh, all of the information I collected with the photos as far as uh, their asset type, asset ID, uh, all of the information I collected, but the points have been moved to these high accuracy locations uh, after I processed it through uh, the geotag wizard. So now if we take a look, my points here are right on to where my control points are here in ARC. So I can take a look at these and say, oops, sorry about that. I can take a look at these and say my points, I know that I've moved them to the higher accuracy locations. And now that information, the new picture, the new, uh, uh, the new attribute information that was collected has been moved to these high accuracy locations. And then I can create my output. So what I can do then is uh, just create a new shape file or, uh, you know, add it to a geo database. You can create a new one or add it to an existing geo database. We support uh, putting it into the SDE. Uh, so I can take that now higher, high accuracy information points, create my output and uh, put it right back into my GIS system and I am good to go. So that gives you an idea of how you can use GeoJot out there in the uh, field to collect higher accuracy points. Um, we're going to have some time for some questions now coming up, and uh, we will uh, we'll try to answer any of those. Anything that we don't get to, we will, of course, uh, answer uh, afterwards via email, and we will post all of the questions and answers to the website. Uh, I also have some white paper information I can give out about hooking up external receivers and about using the geotag wizard to re-tag with existing information. Uh, so feel free to ask for those and I can send those to you afterwards as well. All right. Thank you very much.